see you there. <laughs> My name is Asalu Adewole. I'm Adimbola Asalu. Hello everybody, my name is Richard Okere Jr. And with me here is... Amotai Okere Richards. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gideon Alejo. Hi, my name is Oyenike Alejo. We've been married for six, six years this year. Three months, yeah. Three months. three months and some weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Five years going to six. Yeah. Five years plus. Black. Cheap. She likes black. Hmm. Do you have any favorite color? You are not particular. Blue. Hmm. It's, it's yes, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a color. My best color. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh no. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't have a favorite color. My best color is black. Aha. Uh -huh. So black is not exactly a color. <laughs> it is. <laughs> First kiss was at my cousin's house. I invited her for an occasion in 20, that was 20, 2016. Yeah, 2016. Our first kiss was at my cousin's house, 2016. I remember. <laughs> Uh, in the car? Yeah, in the yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that one. <laughs> Wait. First kiss. It was in my house, though. Eh. Yeah. Okay. okay. We will accept it. Color, green. Yeah. <laughs> White. I wonder how she does it. It's white, yeah. White. And it's two colors. White and green. Thank him for his love. Thank him for loving you just as you are. Thank him for dying on the cross for you. He's worthy of your praise. Father, we thank you this morning. We're grateful. Hallelujah. Deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God said, Say, oh, someone thank him for his love this morning. Away from me, Jesus, I'm grateful.
Joyful noise unto the Lord. Yeah. 
we didn't come to man this morning. We just came to give you the glory that you deserve. And the worship from the bottom of our heart. I just like you to connect to Jesus. The one who has all the answers. The one who is great and mighty. The one who is mighty in battle. The one that that has no option. That has no second. That has no that has no second. We thank you, Jesus. You have nobody else as great as you. And so we come to you this morning with our worship. Just worship him in spirit right now. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Take it one more time. 
Let's bring ourselves upon the altar. The Bible says we should present our bodies a living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable act of service. I want you to go to God this morning and say, Lord, here I am, oh God. If there is anyone you desire to use, oh God, I am here today. Lift up your voice to heaven and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, oh Lord, as one who desires help, oh God. As one who desires help, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture says in First John, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He said, He that does not love does not know God. Why God is love? Today, God is going to speak into us through His servant. I want you to pray today. I was just sharing a, a, a story of a very a, a young woman. When I mean young, she's married anyway with my dear wife. Talking about she's a very strong person in this country, like a protege. So we were sharing thoughts together. And one day she sat down and told me about how her heart was very heavy. Very heavy against her, her folks, her family. And that she can never forgive them. That was a journey that we started last year. We continued to sh talk together, chat. We just continued to... But I never knew how weighty that thing is until one day we were talking and she was just crying profusely. I saying, this is and against your brother, against your mother, against your sister, against everybody because of what they did. When she told me the story, I will be angry. I will even... My, my own will be worse. But at that point in time, I knew we only needed God's love. A couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, I found that she she posted something about a family, and I just chatted to the person and said, "Good, this this, this is lovely." I said, "Pastor, forgiveness is hard, but thank God." I said, "It's hard." I said, "But thank God." We were there. We just prayed together on the phone and everything, and she continued. Let me tell you the truth. Today's service is a deliverance service. Some of us, we think that forgiving people is doing them a favor. No. It took me years to understand it. So I don't really blame people if you don't understand. It took me years to understand. Forgiving people, you are not doing anybody a favor. You're doing yourself a favor. So we're going to pray a simple prayer before Pastor Sean will come today and share God's word with us. I believe God has put something very powerful in our hearts. In every sense of humility, I want you to lift up your voice and pray to God. Lord, visit me with your word and with your mercy. Visit me today with your word and with your mercy. Let me not live here the same way I came. Can you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart? Let me not live here the same way I came, oh Lord. If there is any heaviness in my heart, oh God, help me, God. Help me, Spirit of Grace. Help me, God. Help me, Spirit of Grace. I need your help. I need your help. I cannot do this alone. I know there is somebody here. 
whose heart is truly heavy concerning your family, concerning your husband, concerning your wife. But I'll tell you today, as the word comes, open your heart and say, Lord, do that which you alone can do. Do that which you alone can do. And I tell you, there is blessings that come with this. When I released myself, I started seeing God's hand. It's an healing service. It's a deliverance service. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Daddy, take control. Speak to us. Instruct us. Guide us. Open us up. Do a surgical, spiritual surgical operation in our lives. At the end, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. And God's people say a resounding amen. amen. Celebrate Jesus with me as you take your seat. I want to welcome those of you online. Thank you for joining us. Today is going to be a powerful day. Going to be back-to-back -back messages from our senior pastor, Pastor Shewun. It's going to be all something that I believe everybody should prepare their hearts towards. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate those online. Let's appreciate them for joining us today. Thank you very much for being a part of today's service. Hallelujah. So as I said earlier, please guys, let's open our hearts to the deliverance of God's word in our lives today in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, to carry us further, let's listen to the media as they present to us. Hello everyone, welcome again to Treasure News. Thank you for joining me. I am OJ Acher. Here are the headlines. Friendship Center meetings resumes today. Better Together Conference starts on Friday. Lead Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Before we go into the details of the news, let us listen to this testimony. I'm here to testify of God's goodness um, in the life of my son Isaac. Sometime in um, late 2020, I discovered the um, a lump in his throat. For me, I thought it was just a lymph, normal lymph node that children had because when he was a baby, he had one by the side of his neck that um, we went to the hospital and he said it was going to disappear after some time. So I thought it was just something normal that would go after a while. When the pain um, persists, I had to take him to the hospital. We met a doctor and then the doctor examined him. After the first test scan that we did, they couldn't really say what was the problem, so they referred us to see a consultant. It was the consultant that um, examined him and said it was a cyst that um, explained that we may need to take it out. After we did the scan and all of the x-rays, they built him for operation on the 6th of January. So December 31st, we came to church for the crossover service. Pastor said, um, said something like, if you, if you have a growth or something in your body, you, you should come out and lay your hand on the altar. So I told him to come out. He came out, went to the altar, did leave his hands, and after the prayers, he came back to his seat. So on the first Sunday of the year, I came to meet Pastor with him, told Pastor that he was going for an operation that we needed him to pray with us. He asked me what the problem was. I explained to him, so he prayed with us and then we left. So when we got to the hospital on the 6th, after we packed our bags to be admitted, the surgeon saw him, checked, examined him, asked him to do um, scan and all of that. And after a while, he, she told us that she will not be able to operate on this board because the growth has regressed. That's what she used. But I chose to say has disappeared. She said the first day we came to the office, she didn't even need to check to see the growth. It was just there. Just looking at the boy, you see that that's so she's not going to do any operation on, on him, that we should go back home. I'm here to just give God all the glory for saving my son from not allowing him to do that surgery and for keeping him. Our family cell units, also known as the Friendship Center, resumes today, 6th of February 2022. If you're looking to belong to a community of spiritually, intellectual, and fun-loving individuals, then Friendship Center is the place to be. Today happens to be the first meeting of the year and it promises to be surprisingly different. To know the center you belong to, kindly visit the information desk on your way out. 
The HCH Annual Better Together Conference kicks off this Friday, the 11th of February 2022. This conference is geared at building and raising individuals who in turn build wholesome families. This is a conference for everyone, both for the singles and married, as issues that affect us collectively will be touched upon. We urge you therefore to set your reminders and do remember to invite friends and loved ones. 1 Timothy 5.17 Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. It is with great delight that we announce the Lead Pastor Appreciation Sunday. This is a day set aside to celebrate and appreciate our Father, Mentor and Pastor for all that He does and all that He represents to us. We enjoin you all to come prepared with your gifts as we bless the set man of the house. This brings us to the end of Treasure News broadcast today. From all of us here in the studio, Thank you for joining us and remember to follow and engage with us on all our social media handles now displayed on the screen. My name is OJ Acher. Do enjoy the rest of the service. Around his treasure house, we found that, that young people um, don't like dating themselves. And when you say, well, why are you not? In fact, girls say there are no guys in this church. I've heard that, that there are no guys in this church. But week in, week out, or every now and again, one of the guys just brings in one of the men, right? So, why do people, why do, and I'm asking the lady, why do guys, the ladies say that there are no guys in this church? Um, well, possibly because they are unavailable in quotes. That yeah, they, they don't approach the dates. Really? Maybe for me, because of experience. <laughs> the experiences I've had with the guys in this church. So I just, as a human, generalized. Okay, Anna. Okay, for me, I'll say um, familiarity breeds contempt most times. Um, let's see you and someone are in the same service unit, you have already known how the person responds to certain situations. Let's say, um, let's say you're in the same unit and they give a project, give a tax, and then you notice like, let's say this person comes late for church or this person is late to um, achieve his target or late to perform his function. Um, you have already seen, you just have that, that idea or that ideology that the person the person, if you and the person are together, um, the person may display this kind of behavior too to you. How are you sure? Are you sure? Can Being you together? <laughs> so the reason why you put that approach us is because you feel that we are not punctual. <laughs> no, punctuality does not have anything to do with that. It's just that you have already seen the person's character. So. Hey, see, finish. <laughs> you see, you see why we, <laughs> you see why we we say that there are no men in this church. What? Come on! <laughs> you seen us finish, please! <laughs> oh, it's not that, it's not Next that. Next question. <laughs> so if you have the luxury of getting married to anyone on earth, and God will be happy with your decision, your family will be happy with it, it will not be a taboo, it's something that will just go down with everybody. Mm. Who would that person be? <laughs> okay, um, for me, it's... Um, I will either snatch my father from my mother. Jesus! 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 <laughs> or oh, Bradley Cooper, like who doesn't want to marry Bradley Cooper? Mm. <laughs> I have fine children with long hair, with blue eyes. Oh my god, Bradley Cooper! <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I'm the one, I'll actually go for a lady with Angela Merkel brain with the Kim Kardashian body, mm -hmm. Jennifer Hudson voice. <laughs> no, but one person, it's just one person. <laughs> of you course, now you can have five people in one. Come on, party. you can have all that now, it's possible. 
But I want a bit of pastoral anointing on Brady Cooper. So, if I can have all that, he should be a Christian. And then we. So we pastor Uber men. Pastor Jim. Pastor God. Pastor Jim. Oh Jesus. Yes, okay. We will not hear bad news from you in the name of Jesus. Got that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, so you could join us at his treasure house on the 11th of February 2022 at Discovery Place, Godo. Um, we'll be having a singles hangout. You could join us. We'll be having a lot of side events like karaoke. Of course, there could be speed dating and blind dating. Your boys could be in that mix or your mommy Gio, sorry, like your roots. So it's going to be... It's, it's going to be... <laughs> You told this table. Me? 
You touch this table. Me. <laughs> ah, I'm not touching water, I just pour. Me, Tota. <laughs> See my hand now. Cameraman, talk like <laughs> Cause I love the way you cho 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 for me like so 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 so. Then no fit to my jaw to my baby baby. I say what for my baby? Yes I love the way you cho 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 for me like so 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 so. Then no fit to them all for my baby baby. I say what for my baby. You are like me. Better to get that conference just start today. Abby, <laughs> please put your hands together. If you're expectant of what the Lord is going to do during the Better Together conference, I can't just wait. You know, this um, wetting of the appetite is just too much. I just feel like let's start today so that those games can keep rolling. Can you imagine? You know, but the men think they can win us. It's not. It's, Women, we're just, you know, we're just wise like that. It's just God that made us so. It's not our fault. Please, can you lift up your hands this morning and bless the name of the Lord. Thank him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The, the lover himself. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you. We thank you. The one who loves us genuinely. Oh, Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Can TIC help me? And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. rejoice. Take, Take joy, joy, my, my King. King. Oh, in what you hear. I don't know whether your voice is getting to heaven this morning. Let, Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be in your ears. One more time, I love you, Lord. I love you. Can we just worship the Lord in the spirit this morning? Father, you are a good God. Father, let our voice be a sweet sound. Even in your ears this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you all the glory. Lover of our soul, we thank you. The one who is love himself, we give you all the glory. Thank you because you died for us. Even when we were sinners, you died for us. Lord, you loved us beyond ourselves. 
you loved us even beyond our circumstances and our shortcomings we give you praise thank you for your reckless love blessed be your name forevermore thank you Jesus thank you Holy Ghost Father we give you glory this morning we thank you because we know you are here with us and Father in the name of Jesus we pray Lord for mending for arts to be mended this morning we ask in the name of Jesus that you will pour your love in our hearts. Amen. Even by the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name forevermore. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Please put your hands together Amen. this morning as we celebrate the lover of our soul. Hallelujah. Is that, why are you minding your club this morning? Let's lavish it on him. Because he first lavished it on us. Hallelujah. You can welcome your neighbor to church this morning and do have your seat in God's awesome presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It's February again. And you know, February started on a very high note on Wednesday. Our services, I don't know how many of you were at the service on Wednesday, but that was super amazing and hilarious. You want to celebrate our father in the house? Please put your hands together. And if you were not here, I just want to encourage you uh, to get the CD. Of course, it's on YouTube, it's on Facebook, but make sure you listen to that message. It was amazing. So insightful, very, you know, detailed, and I'm trusting that as many times as you listen to this, the Lord will do a work in your life and in your home in the mighty name of Jesus. One more time, celebrate our Father in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise God. I just run through a few announcements before I go into the message today. Yesterday was awesome with a skipping meal. I want to celebrate everybody that was present and all of you that have been supporting. You want to celebrate yourselves. Uh, the community are very grateful for us coming over and over and over again. So the Lord bless you and increase you and your band will never be empty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Better Together Conference. I don't think there's a better announcement I can give better than what has been done. But I want to encourage you, if you're a single in this house, on the 11th, which is Friday, don't miss it for anything. I don't know why you want to even miss it. You cannot afford to. And you cannot even come alone. You have to come with people, invite your friends, and uh, just come and have a, uh, a very wonderful uh, date time on Friday here in this auditorium. It promises to be awesome. You've seen a glimpse of it, and I'm believing God that um, more than what you've heard is going to be more graceful and beautiful more than that in Jesus' name. So come on the 11th. The Better to come, uh, Together conference starts with the Singles Fellowship, and on the 12th, the married will be here. Also, having fun in the presence of God. You know, it's an opportunity. Some of you, be, since January, especially men, you've not taken your wives out. Use this as an opportunity. Bring them out. Even though it's inside church. Yes, it's still outside. You know the way they always say, we are outside. Uh, this place too is outside. We are outside. Come and be outside in the presence of God. Please, let's make sure that we are here on Saturday. If you're married and you're here, make sure you make a date with God on the 12th of uh, February. It promises to be great, great, great in God's presence. There will be a marriage renewal or vow renewal and uh, pro uh, karaoke, so many things lined up for that day. And on Saturday, we have several, uh, yeah, sorry, on Friday, several games also. Then on Sunday, uh, grand finale, um, everybody, single, married, all of us will be here present in God's, in God's house, you know, having a great time in his presence. So don't miss it. Please, can you help me preach to your neighbor? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. For anything, don't miss it. And don't come alone. Another preaching. Oh, yeah, preach again. Don't come alone. Yes, don't come alone. Hallelujah. And, um, okay, my second uh, announcement. Secondly, the Women of Grace um, will be having a program this February also in line with what is happening uh, in this month of February. And we'll be discussing a very beautiful topic um, called intimacy. So our theme 
for this month's uh, program is called Cracking the Intimacy Code. Because a lot of us don't even know what it means. It's beyond sex. So we need to understand what intimacy is all about. So the thing seems very hard. We want to come and break it down. We have a guest appearance, Pastor Jumoke Lawabi, joining me uh, on the 19th of February uh, for this awesome meeting. Thank you. It's already on the screen. Cracking the intimacy code. And I tell you, intimacy starts from the individual. So whether you're a single, you don't say that, okay, maybe it's, you know, it's not for the married. It's for the singles and the married. Because you need to understand yourself first, your own love language, before you know how to enter into somebody or how somebody can please you when it comes to love. So it promises to be a fantastic program. Don't miss it, 19th of February. So this month is just fully packed for every one of us. Even the single again, I'm sure there's something cooking for you. So just get ready because God is set for all of us in this month of February. So don't miss any of these programs. Uh, make sure you are part of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So I will just continue. I'm not towing the line of marriage so fully, but we just want to talk about love generally and how it affects our lives and what we're expected to do, expectations, uh, the demands on us and the things that we're supposed to give in that area. This subject called love is just so powerful. I think it's everything about Christianity. But the world thinks that they know even more than us. So when it comes to February, they almost sort of hijack February. And, you know, you see a lot of programs out there doing, you know, teaching us how to love. And we are the custodians of love because we carry God. God is love. So they, they, we need to teach them how love is done because that genuine love, the unadulterated love is in, is in Christ, is in Jesus. So we need to teach how this love needs to be expressed. So this month, everything we're doing is talking about love, our own commitment, our responsibility, and how it affects us, what we're expected to do. And at the end of the day, our world can never remain the same because love is what, is what makes our world go around. If love is done properly, I tell you, everywhere we go to, there will be peace. There will be peace. I'll be starting out with a story in the Bible this morning. Uh, the story is in Luke chapter 10. It's in Luke chapter 10. Very, very familiar story that I'm sure you must have read it before as a young child in your Sunday school, or you have read it in recent times, even as an adult in your Bible. Luke chapter 10, I'm going to be reading from 25 to 37 thereabout. Media, please help me this morning. Luke chapter 10, our story is going to be starting uh, from that scripture, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, from verse 25. <laughs> okay, thank you. They gave me TPT. They know I'm a TPT person. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I'll just read from here. Just then, a religious scholar stood before Jesus in order to test his doctrines. He posed this question. Teach, teacher, what requirement must I fulfill if I want to live forever in heaven? You know, Jesus Christ, they showed him pepper when he came. The, the people that seem to have, the, the, they are the custodian of the Bible, they post different questions just to destabilize him. And this was one of the questions they post in those days, thinking that, okay, if you, are, if you think you are love yourself, you have been preaching this, okay, so we are asking you questions. We want to live forever because you've been talking about us coming to you and all of that. How can we live forever? So listen to Jesus' reply. Jesus replied, what does Moses teach us. Because since that's what you know, what does Moses teach us? What do you read in the law? The next verse. So the religious scholar answered, it states it the, that you must love the Lord your God with also one of the requirements to live forever is this. One of the requirements to live forever is what he's talking about. He said you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your passion, all your energy, all your every thought and you must love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, another question. Jesus said, this is correct. Now go and do exactly and you will live. So 29, wanting to justify himself. And I think this is what many of us do. 
we justify ourselves, even after knowing certain things, wanting to justify himself. Do you remember when the disciples were even also asking Jesus, he said, hey, did you say we should forgive? Did you say seven times, seven times? You know, we like to justify when after knowing certain things, you just get to a point where, after all, it might not be as extreme as they are saying. So let me go this way. So wanting to justify himself, he, he questioned Jesus further. He questioned, saying, what do you mean by neighbor? Because, you know, sometimes when we hear the word of God, we just look at it and say, okay, for adventure, this neighbor now, maybe he's just talking about that woman beside my house. You know, and that would be the limit. We try to put the limit on the things that Jesus asked us to do. But he is saying, do it. Do it wholeheartedly. I want you to go the extra mile. Stretch. Do the extra. Can you go the extra mile? But because we don't want to go the extra mile, we tend to come up with certain things and say, okay, okay, after all, if I do this, I'm okay. Then some of us will tell ourselves, I don't try now. How many of you have told yourself that? Uh, no, no, no. I cannot come and kill myself. I cannot come. After all, all I've done, I think is enough. One person, two people, three is just enough. So Jesus replied, listen, and I will tell you. There was once a Jewish man. See how Jesus, Jesus is very, very smart. Did you, did you notice he didn't answer this question straight? When he asks the question, he will come up. Oh yeah, you too, answer the question yourself. Put yourself on the line. Because if you had gone straight, then the man will hold him. After all, you said this. He didn't go. He said, no. You tell me what Moses said. After saying that, okay, what do you feel about it? This is what I feel about it. Then go and do it. He said, eh, okay, if you say I should go and do it, then eh, what, what, what do you really mean about this part? What do you really mean about this part? He said, listen. I'll tell you this story. So he said there was a certain man. And he was very careful to use that word. He was a certain man. Not the man beside your house, Seth. He did not qualify it. A certain man. Anybody gets into that certain man description. Everybody gets into that description. Jesus Christ gave a very blanket answer. A certain man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho... And of course, he was robbed along the way. They beat him severally, striped him naked, and left him half dead. Then in 31, soon a Jewish priest walking down the same road came upon the wounded man, seeing him from a distance. The priest crossed to the other side of the road and walked right past him, not turning to him one bit. And this is just what happens. This was a Jewish priest. This was somebody that you will expect everything from. You know, this was just the man that you will think uh, has the whole knowledge about the scripture and knows what is expected of him. But this man saw the guy that was in need. The Bible said he passed by him. He just went, crossed the road as the beg. I know if he, I, I cannot, I'm just, I, I, can't, I can't stay, I can't wait. Or who, who is this man? I don't even know him. Please, please, please. And that, that is, that's the problem. Because we get to this point, you know, some, when I was reading this scripture again, I was now looking at myself as in, can you imagine? They said a priest. They didn't even say a layman. A priest. Do you know what a priest means? A pastor. A child of God that has gone to another level of responsibility. To say, I want to serve my generation. You know, son, somebody who is in need. I think this is, is a call for serious and a deep thinking because if we look at this then you look at yourself and extray yourself how will i behave in this kind of situation and i tell you it, the man doesn't have to be on the road there are a lot of people around us even in this church that we have seen and we have walked by we've just walked past them because we cannot be bothered you know sometimes how we cannot just be bothered and I looked at it and I extrayed myself. And I, and I remember some certain times where I cannot even be bothered. And I, and I was thinking, if I was the one asking Jesus this question that day, I'd say, wow, this is serious. It's a serious matter. 
Because the issue of love or the, the subject of love means so much to God because God is love. That is his nature. That is what he said. Why we were yet sinners, he died for us. Because that's, that is just what he would do. Why we were yet, while we were languishing in sin, he gave himself for us. He did not even consider himself as God. He looked at us and looked at us in our wretchedness and said, Oh no, I can't leave them this way. I can't leave them this way. I will come. I will die. Of course, while Pastor was preaching on uh, Wednesday, he mentioned a fact because that is, that's what we should know. It's not always easy. Even Jesus, it wasn't easy for him. When he was going on that road, he said, can this cup be taken away from me? It's not an easy thing. It's a decision. It's a life that we have to allow God to help us to do. Even Jesus who died for us on the road, on the road when he was almost going to be killed, he said, can this cup pass over me? So sometimes when we think about ourselves, we might think, okay, no, uh, uh, it's too much. Yes, it's too much. Oh. Can I tell you? It's too much. And by our strength, we cannot do it because it's too much, really. It's too much. It's only by the help of God. Please don't go with my scripture. Please leave my story on the screen. Then verse 32, verse 32, we've already read this. Later, another man, a religious man, a Levite, a church member, a choir member, an usher, um, a, a protocol officer, and what other units? They were, so this man, he came walking down the same road and likewise crossed to the other side to pass by the wounded, uh, wounded man without stopping to help him. Without stopping to help him. Then finally, another man, a Samaritan, a nobody, a no-name man came upon the bleeding man and was moved with tender compassion for him. So would we say that sometimes when we are even in church, we sort of lose our compassion? Because we cannot help or love without compassion. Even Jesus, compassion welled on inside, before he could feed the 4,000, feed the 5,000, it was compassion. He was putting himself in their shoes. He was thinking of himself and thinking of this man. And of course, you know the end of the story. He took him, of course, uh, um, first took care of him there, took him to where he would be taken care of, and everything ended because this guy did what Jesus will expect. Then in 35, if you can just give me the last one of 35, the next morning he took his own money from his wallet and gave to the, I think 37 is where, maybe 37 is the end. If 37 is the end, just give it to me. The religious scholar responded, the one who demonstrated kindness and mercy, because Jesus was asking him, so who is, who is the person? Who is your neighbor? He said, the one who demonstrated kindness and mercy. Jesus said, you must go and do same. You must go and do same. You must go and do same. The question I want to pose this morning is if it were you that was down on the road, broken, had accident, or has been robbed, what would you expect the next person to do to you? That's the question. If it were you. Because a lot of times the reason why we don't do what we're supposed to do is that we don't think of ourselves in that situation. And I tell you this story very fast. My parents had exactly the same issue like this about, let me say 12, 13, I can't remember how many years ago now. Exactly the same. They were on Ibado Expressway and they had an accident. And everybody left them there. The next thing I heard was, I had a phone call and, you know, my dad could wriggle himself out of the um, accident site. But mommy was still somewhere locked in the car and in the ditch and she couldn't come out. And she called, and he called me, he said, ah, mommy. Then I said, what's wrong with mommy? Mommy, he was just saying mommy. What happened? They just had an accident. Nobody's there. Nobody's helping. Nobody. And I, I'm just like, wow. I had to, I, I was looking at my phone. I look at myself. I was at Ojodu. Even if I turn to a bird and fly, there's no way I would get there in, 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 in five minutes. And by the time I would get there, anything could have happened. They could have gone if it were you. If it were you. So the only thing I could do at that point, I just pray. I say, God, just send them an angel. This Samaritan was an angel. 
Because it went beyond the, the call. It did beyond himself. Because the people who were even knowledgeable, the priests, the Levites, they walked past. Because they looked at it as in paradventure, uh, they had something else to do. Paradventure, they understood that this guy, no, uh, if we come here, you know a lot of things happen in Nigeria especially. And see, we cannot blame ourselves. But at the same time, would we use whatever is happening around us to become somebody else? Because sometimes you look at yourself and say, oh, if I stop by now to help this guy, maybe some, maybe it's, an, it's a syndicate, you know? I've thought about that before. I said, maybe it's a syndicate too. If you start to help the person. I know that some people just come from the bush. Hey! <laughs> There's even the things that, we will think of the things that are not happening. And because of that, we just carry our bag and our car. We just look and see if it's not happening. And you walk away. And because of that, our nation has even suffered. Our homes have suffered because we have refused to do extra. Go the extra mile. Lay yourself. Say, love is sacrifice. <laughs> love is sacrifice. And you know, sometimes when we talk about neighbor, it feels so far away. But do you know your, your maid is your neighbor? Your husband is your neighbor? Your child is your neighbor? In fact, that, that issue of husband, I've had to cancel some people. I will now get to this thing that you said your husband did. If it was your son that did it, would you forgive? And you will see the woman calm down and reason. As in, eh, well, well, well. Eh, he's a young boy. <laughs> you know, they, we give excuses at every point in time for the things that we're not doing. And we try to justify everything that is wrong that we're doing. Or whatever we're supposed to do that we're not doing. We justify it. And in this month, everything we're talking about is just to remind ourselves. Because I'm just wondering, the priest, why will he forget the teachings of Jesus? Why will he forget the teachings? Not even Jesus, because Jesus was asking him what he knew from the Moses law. So he was quoting from Moses law. After all, Moses has taught them a lot of things. But we often forget the things we learn. Why? Because we don't even go back. Our brain, most of the time, is not computer. You cannot remember. You have to keep reminding yourself. You have to keep reading. You have to keep notifying. And being in an environment where these things can be spoken of. So, if we turn the table, if we turn the table, and you are now on the table, how would you react? So, if you begin to think that way, and look at yourself as, okay, if I'm on the table, what will I expect? I will expect love. I will expect attention. I will expect sacrifice. I will, so if you turn the table, everything you think in your mind to do, do it to others. Everything you can imagine in your mind that you will expect people to do to you, that is what others are expecting you to do to them. You know, sometimes we think that, hey, I don't know what he wants. I don't know how far they want me to go. I don't know. Because you have not put yourself on the line. Because you have not put yourself on the table. The day you begin to look at yourself and imagine that you are the one who is on the receiving end, then you begin to think rightly. The reason why our brain is shut down is because we always think about ourselves alone. What I have to give. This is too much demand from me. But would you demand such from people? God forbid. You find yourself in a very terrible situation and you're just looking and there is nobody coming to help you. So this story is, is very, it's very deep. And when we look at it, you just find that, okay, these are things that we do unknowingly, unconsciously. Sometimes we find ourselves doing all of these things and God is expecting more, is demanding more from us. Sometimes we look at it and say, my neighbor, very argumentative. Uh, she doesn't even listen to it. Will, no, 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 that kind of person I want to be far away from. Do you know, even in this church, in church, some of us come walking the same door and uh, we leave and you cross your path very closely like this and there's no hello. There's no how are you. There's no further discussion. Because you put yourself in a, in, in, in a scenario, in a position where you just feel that, no, see, I don't want anybody to disturb me. So everybody wants to be loved. Summary. Everybody wants to be loved and helped. I don't know about you, but I want to be loved and I want to be helped. 
everybody wants it. Anybody that tells you, no, 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 I don't want anybody to, no, 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 no. I'm a self-made man. He's a liar. That person is a liar from the pit of hell. There's no self-made man. We all need somebody to grow. In fact, at the beginning of this year, pastor was talking so much on people around us. You need someone. You need people. In fact, the way God made it is that he didn't put the 100% on the inside of one person. Unfortunately for you. So you don't have everything. You don't carry everything. You need somebody. You know, when you look at your body frame and the way God structure our body from our head to our toe, then you will understand what God is demanding from us. Because when your hand, something pricks your hand and there's so much pain, you will, you will, your whole body will react and respond to it. So it's just to tell you that this hand is very important. Have you seen somebody who cannot hold things? The hand is useless. Paraventure was useful before. All of a sudden, nervous system, breakdown. And the hand is not working again. Leg is not working again. It's very frustrating. It's to tell you that every part of our body is important. So everyone you see that God has created in his own image. Because God created all of us in his own image. We're all important to ourselves. You know that songwriter say, I need you to survive. Truly, I need you to survive. Truly. Because your smile can come in a day where I really truly need it. And by the time you smile and give me that warm hug per adventure, every pain in me that I'm experiencing can disappear. That might just be the deliverance I need in a day. You walk on the street and somebody, you know, uh, has just been walking. You, you don't even know what we're all going through, especially in this country. So in your office, in your neighborhood, everywhere you find yourself, we all need Someone to love us and to help us. We do truly need it. We need everybody wants to be loved and helped. But if only you can give love to the proportion of which you expect to be loved, our world will become a better place. That's just it. If only you can give love to the proportion to which you want to be loved, then our world will become a better place. Just begin to reason it that way all the time. If I can give love to the tune, to the proportion of which I want to be loved, even your marriage will be the best on the surface of the earth. I tell you the truth. The reason why we have issues, even in our marriages, is because one person sometimes is giving more or is thinking that he's giving more. And because of that, wants to reduce whatever he or she is giving. He said, after all, I've tried my best. And we all get to that point at some point. So I'm not talking to you alone. We all experience such pressure where you just feel that I've, I have dissipated so much and I just need somebody to come back. But just give. The Bible speaking in Acts chapter 20 verse 35. says it is better to give than to receive. You know, because human beings are very self-centered. We always think about ourselves. And it's the, it's the spirit of the age. Second Timothy, he said in the last days, people shall be lovers of themselves and lovers of God. And that spirit is taking over, is moving all around. You find that people are standing on their own points, remaining, you know, so I was asking mommy, that's pastor's mom, sometimes ago, I said, how did you guys do it in your time that you've been married for 50 years, married for 60 years? And if you ask your parents the same thing, they will tell you, of course you know, they don't even have to tell you. They were married for 60 years. They were married for 50 years. How did it happen? Sacrifice, commitment, compromise. Those were the things. And she laughed. She couldn't even give me an answer. I said, I want one, two, three, four points. Because these days, we trust God for our marriages. And I'm believing God that the homes, the marriages in this place, God will strengthen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And peradventure issues have happened because issues happen. There's some certain stretch that we get to and we, can, we have to break. God is still the lover of your soul and is still very much interested in you. He's not giving up on you yet. There's still life after life. And there's life even after another kind of singleness. 
Because God loves us just the way we are. So human beings are very self-centered. Sometimes we can't be bothered. I mentioned that. Sometimes we can't go the extra mile. Sometimes we justify every move that we take. We just justify it, just like that man was justifying it. Uh, so who, do you, who, who are you telling me my neighbor is right now? Sometimes we give excuses, as in big excuses, why we should not do the things we should do. Sometimes we're too much in a hurry, even to attend to someone. We're too much in a hurry to even love on someone. We're even too much in a hurry to, you know, um, give somebody what they need. So today, I've already mentioned my topic, if it were you. <laughs> That's it. That's what I've been talking about. If it were you. What were you? There's another beautiful story in Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 to 35. Talking about that man that was forgiven. And he was forgiven just now. And he turned back. After he had been forgiven, the person that was owing him, he forgot that he was just forgiven. And he almost killed that guy. Jesus said, call him back. Call him back. Call him back. Because it's, it's in your own tone, you wanted to be forgiven. Now somebody else has offended you, has taken money from you, or is expecting something, and you cannot. Can't you even be so gracious and give what I've just given you now and give to the person? And of course, you, all, you know the story. That forgiveness was recalled back. Matthew chapter 18, from verse 23 to 35. I'm not going to read it. You can write it down. So as much as it lies within you, the Bible says, live peaceably with all men. In 631 of Luke, he said, and as you wish that others will do to you, do also to others. Whatever you want others to do to you, do also to others. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 says, so whatever you wish that others will do to you, do also to them. As it has been written in the laws and the prophets. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, he said, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. God is very interested in your neighbor. God is very interested in those people that can, be, that can benefit from your own grace. God is very interested from the people that can be loved by you. And that's why all this, all this scripture has been spread across in the Bible. Two major ways we can express this love is by giving and by forgiving. So major way, when you give, you forgive, you're expressing love genuinely. You're expressing love genuinely. Let me just jump. Oh, wow. Praise God. I, I will continue in, 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 um, in second service, but let me just jump to some few things. How you can love your neighbor, especially the difficult ones. Some very few points. How can you love your neighbor? Number one. You need to think of loving them. It all starts from the heart. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You need to think of love. You need to think of that subject. You need to think of the people around you. You need to think of the people who don't even deserve it. You need to, you know, and put in love in your mind continually. Because what you think, you do. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You got to be gracious. Some people don't deserve what you are going to give to them, but you have to give it to them. As a child, I felt not loved by my father. And you know, every time we talk about this topic, we always get through this route because this is just reality. These are things that have happened to all of us. Some of us have had some experiences that are very bad. And I remember I was in a church like this many years ago when the man of God was talking about love and loving the unlovable. And I just look at it, what, why would I love my father? Looking through everything that he has done and truly hindsight, when you look at it as an adult, you find that most of those decisions that our parents made, you will make the same for your children. Some of us, we make even almost worse decisions on the behalf of our children. <laughs> but we were angry because we had no knowledge. Unfortunately, and that day I was in that room, just like all of you are in this room. And I was wondering, why would I forgive this man? He doesn't deserve it. First, it took me as a five years old girl to the village. What did I do? Do you know some of you are annoyed up to now because of that? I mean, I'm the only one in this room. 
Some of you were taken to the village and you were left there for years. In fact, your school was ampered. Your schooling was ampered. Some of you could not finish secondary school. Some of you uh, eventually finished secondary school, but uh, your English is ampered. So now when you get to the big world and everybody is speaking, choo, 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 and you want to say something, you say, um, um, you know there's some word, like if you want to say think, you say think. I suppose, oh, no, why, why, why is your TH so, you say, hey, is it my fault? Did you know when they took me to the... And some of us are so full of anger because of these little decisions that our parents did or made on our behalf based on their own strength, own position. And what they felt was best for you. Somebody is laughing in the choir stand. Peculiar. <laughs> because unfortunately, they bundled... In fact, she was younger. And I remember the, oh my God, I can't share that experience. <laughs> Something just came to my mind right now. <laughs> I can't share it, oh my God. I remember when we came back to Lagos, the first school Peculiar went to, she ran away from the bathroom. I'm telling you the truth. She has never seen that white thing before. And for me, for years, I struggled. Because I just felt, because my, mo my grandmother used to produce uh, palm kernel oil. And the, you can you imagine, I want to say oil, now I say oil. <laughs> can you imagine? It's still part of the experience that we have not been totally delivered from. But it's, it's just one of those things. It's part of life. And it's good. Our mess has become our message. And sometimes when God takes you through this, this is just what he wants to achieve. You can't just walk. Life is not linear. You just be walking like this straight. If you are just going like this straight, like this, you, won't I fall? At this point, I will fall. But God made it so much that by the time I get here, I can take a detour and go round. Because there's a ditch here. The reason why God allowed you to go through what you went through is because there was a ditch ahead of you. You could have fallen into it. You could have just been going straight and fall into it. But God has seen ahead of you that there was a ditch ahead of you. And it will make you take a detour. But sometimes the detours are not very good. They are very painful detours. You go through it and there are stones. But is that not why he said I will give my angels charge over you? They will bear you up so that you will not hit your legs against the stone. Everything you've gone through in life. God knows about it. And I was in that service that day, saying, why would I forgive my father? When I even came back, he still didn't look for a better school to put me. He still took me. Later, he, he actually realized. I said, why am I doing this to this girl? But it's good. It's all good now. See, there is no thing. There is no place. If you put me in Timbuktu, is that what they call it? I would thrive. There is no place. Village, you put me in the highest of the elite place. By the time I dust my clothes, I will blend. If you put me in the village, I will blend. If you remove my shoe, I will walk on my leg. There is no place. Some of us, that we didn't have such experiences. When you get to very hard places, you break. God has a reason. Why you're going through what? But I remember that day. When I got understanding, I forgave my father. I forgave him. I said, if he knew better, was that not what Jesus Christ said? If he knew better, he would do better. This is the height of what he knew. And he has done me well by doing the best in his capacity. I won't take it against him. And there's somebody that you don't need to take something against today. So that you can be free. You have held it for too long. But you need to release that person. So that you can be free. You have been in that cage for too long. It's time to fly. You're looking at yourself. Why have I not been able to fly? Why am I crawling? It's because you are in a cage. 
And do you know the funny thing? The cage door has been opened, but you refuse to come out. Wide open. You refuse to come out. Because you keep saying to yourself, I have been tied down. I am in the cage. I can't move. I can't do. I can't fly. But I tell you today, you can fly. You need to think about love. You need to put love in your heart so that you can be gracious. You need to think deeply. When you think about it, you become it. When you continually live in the atmosphere of love, you live it. And today, God is speaking to somebody here today. That, see, you can't even love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. You are the first person that has to be delivered. You have to deliver yourself from that hold of the enemy. The devil has to lose his grip over your life today. So that you can be free to fly. You can be free to fly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You just look like the person I'm talking about since I've just been talking about you. You think, oh, Pastor, you're just talking about me. I'm just the one. I, I just feel so much in the cage. I can't move. And this is your year of manifestation. You need to move. You need to fly. You need to swear. You just want to lift up your hands. You feel you feel you are the one I've been talking to. Everywhere you are right now, I want you to lift up your hand and ask for the love of God to be poured in your heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. He said that the love of God will be poured in our heart by the Holy Holy Ghost. You want to ask for the love of God. You want to ask for the love of God to be poured in your heart. Holy Spirit, let your love flow through this atmosphere. Break every yoke of, of pain, every yoke of pain, shame, every shame you've experienced. I break you free from it. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. Can you, can you take a bold step by rising up? this morning. If you're lifting up your hand, can you rise up this morning? Oh, Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your love. That you will pour your love on the heart of this one. That you will wash them clean this morning, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. That you will clean them. That you will go through every corner of pain and shame. And you will cause your love to do a work in them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you. Lord, I thank you for your sons and daughters. Oh, Father, I thank you. Oh. Because of this one, yes, Lord, you died. Thank you for washing away pain this morning. Washing away pain and shame. To some of you, I see shame. You've carried shame for so long. Jesus. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, I pray for your children that your love will wash them, will clean them, will take away every form of shame, every pain. I break the holes over you right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that has held you in that box. The mighty hand of God. Break you free. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I say to you, you have escaped. Amen. Like the bed after the foulest snare. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for love. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Remove every garment of shame. Amen. Every garment of pain. Amen. Every garment of disappointment. Amen. Every garment of why is Amen. it me? Remove it this morning. Amen. And pour your love. Amen. <laughs> oh, you look past my sin, my shame. You pour your love. Oh, you will look beyond this one. So, you will look beyond that challenge. 
you will look beyond their shame you will look beyond their pain and you will pour your love you will pour your love thank you holy ghost in jesus mighty name we pray amen father thank you for a bypass there is a bypass work going on right now in your heart when the physical heart has a problem they do a bypass father i see a bypass in the heart of this one creating them a new heart a renew right spirit within them amen you will go today Amen. And you will find rejoicing again. Amen. You will smile again. Amen. You will jump. Amen. You will soar. Amen. You will fly. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sweet spirit of grace. Thank you, Father. You have escaped. Celebrate Jesus. And I've just seen you have escaped. I'll continue in the second service. I could not touch on a lot of things. But I'm trusting that God will give us grace during the second service. Hallelujah. One more time, celebrate God for his word this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is your first time of fellowshipping with us in his treasure house. We do not want to take your presence for granted. We're so glad you could make it. If today is your first time, can I see a show of hand? We want to welcome you warmly. Yes, you are welcome. Please can you help me celebrate and welcome them. Can you rise up on your feet? Can you rise up on your feet? We want to welcome you. your bag you can have your seat welcome to his treasure house the place where he makes us if you have gotten your bag yes thank you you can see it this is his treasure house the place where he makes us what he originally created us for and we believe and know that in this house that God is working on our lives gradually day by day taking us to that place that he has created for us and I believe God that you will fulfill purpose in the mighty name of Jesus if this church looks like the church that you've been trusting God for believing God for and uh, you want to be a part of this kind of family we want to say to you this morning that you are welcome and our senior pastor uh, will be so glad to pastor you so I welcome you powerfully to his treasure house and I say that your life will never remain the same in Jesus name if you are also joining us for the first time online. I welcome you also powerfully. And I pray that the grace of God will meet with you there in the name of Jesus. There's a link scrolling on your screen right now. Kindly touch it and it will take you to a Zoom room. Our pastors will be there to welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor. One more time, can we welcome them on site and online? Welcome them powerfully. Some people are not welcome. They are not excited to see our guest this morning. Hallelujah. You are welcome. Hallelujah. So uh, before the choir administration, if you're giving your offerings, you're giving your tithes and your benevolent seed, you're writing a check, kindly write in favor of his Treasures International Ministries. If you're writing, if you're uh, giving your tithe this morning, please kindly write uh, your check is, is Treasures International Ministry. And you can also give our other platforms. We have the online account displayed. We have the POS at the information desk if you want to take advantage of the POS this morning. If you're done packaging your tights this morning, you want to give your tight, please can you just rise up on your feet where you are? You're giving your tight. Can you rise up on your feet? Hallelujah. Can you lift up your, uh, your tight? If you have given online also, you can lift up your hand. Father, we thank you for this once. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to give. And today, in the name of Jesus, I commit them to your hand that indeed you will bless the works of their hand. You will bless their band and their band will never be empty in the name of Jesus. As your hands are lifted, it will continually be lifted. It will not come down in shame in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you that this your hand 
will have much more to give in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for these tithes that are, they are releasing and giving to you this morning. That it will multiply, it, this seed will germinate more in the name of Jesus. It's leaving their hand right now, but it's not leaving their life. It's returning back in full measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over even to your bosom in Jesus' name. Thank you, righteous Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. So the ushers will be right behind you. You can drop your offerings, uh, your tithes. And lastly, if you're giving your offerings this morning, you're writing a check right in favor of his Treasure House International Ministries. And you can also give via other platforms. Can you just lift up your hands if you're giving your offerings? Father, we are grateful for the privilege to give. Thank you because you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Father, we are grateful. Grateful for life. Grateful for that which you are putting in our hand. And Father, today in the name of Jesus, as we release it, we pray, oh God, that it will be a sweet smelling sacrifice, even unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you because you will bless us with the blessings money can buy and the blessings money can buy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed and given thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. The ushers will come to take the last message for this day. Please celebrate with me one of the best choir in the whole world. TIC as a minister too. Hallelujah. I have everything I need because the great I am provides for me. Do I have a weakness in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. I have everything. Perfect in my weakness, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are my strength when I'm weak.
Let's give it up for TIC one more time. Thank you so much. Isn't it amazing how God just takes us through all that journey to bring out the best from us? Please let's celebrate our mother. Thank you so much, Pastor. That was a strong word. I pray that God will grant us the grace to love like he has loved us in Jesus' name. Um, this is to all our first-time guests, the representative of the senior pastor would like to have a brief word with you on this side of the auditorium. Immediately after this service, is going to be short. Please indulge us and God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's be reminded that on Wednesday, pastor continues the guaranteed success code, code for marital bliss at 6 p.m. Please, let's gather here and let's come enjoy the presence of God. And also, let's be reminded that the Better Together conference is this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, singles on fr Friday, yes, at 5 p.m., married on Saturday at 5 p.m., and then we gather together two services next Sunday. Uh, please let's rise as we bring this service to a close. Immediately after um, we share our closing charge, we enjoin everybody to please exit this place so that we can prepare for the second service. Let's take our closing charge. If I only look at myself outwardly, I might miss the essence of my existence. If I carry treasure hidden in me, that the excellency of God's power may show through me, I will fulfill destiny. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a blessed week.